Baton Rouge police are investigating a shooting. And another shooting happened on a roulette avenue. East Baton Rouge Parish saw 170 homicides in 2021. And another shooting. So far in 22, there are already 10. Police responded to hundreds of violent crimes and with news alerts seemingly daily, some members of the community are worried of what the city is becoming. We gotta stop letting these violent criminals who will continue to terrorize our neighborhoods out on the streets. In the gritty streets of Baton Rouge, an alarming surge in gang violence has gripped the city, leaving a trail of tragedy and shattered lives. Record-setting murder rates have painted a bleak picture of a city seemingly spiraling out of control, reaching its deadliest peak in 2021. The shadow of danger looms large over Baton Rouge, resembling a perilous landscape that anyone would surely want to escape given the chance. Despite the allure of wealth, fame, and opportunities available to affiliates associated with Young Boys NBA and 4K Trey Crew, their deep ties to the city's violent underbelly make them susceptible to violent reprisals. A new generation of street-connected youth has emerged, eager to prove themselves in both the unforgiving streets and the burgeoning local rap scene. For these young individuals, success in the music industry could be their ticket out of the urban warfare, provided they manage to navigate the perilous environment in time. Tragically, the promising 18-year-old rapper True Bleda, seen as one of the brightest stars following in young boy's footsteps, lost his life in early 2022, just as he was on the brink of a breakthrough. His untimely demise can be traced back to the tumultuous events of 2021, when a fierce conflict unfolded between rival factions, playing out not only in the streets but also in the realm of music. While contemporary rap enthusiasts focus their attention on Baton Rouge and its street gangs, the city's spotlight primarily shines due to the remarkable success of Young Boy in the late 2010s. Yet, even before Young Boy brought Baton Rouge to the forefront, gangs had long held sway over the streets. Reports of escalating gang activity and crime have branded the city as one of the most perilous in the nation, a reputation dating back to at least the 1980s. The roots of the gang issue run deep, entangled in a complex web of historical factors. Generational trauma stemming from a history marked by exceptionally harsh slavery in the state is one facet. Additionally, the lingering impact of extreme racism, discrimination, and segregation during the Jim Crow era, which found its beginnings in Louisiana, contributes to the city's challenges. Modern times have left Louisiana among the nation's poorest states, with Baton Rouge itself ranking among the most impoverished areas. Compounding this, minorities, particularly African Americans, face higher rates of poverty compared to the city's white residents, despite whites being the minority in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, paints a picture quite distinct from the typical American cityscape. Rather than the familiar layout of a large downtown teeming with skyscrapers and bustling businesses, followed by upscale neighborhoods, a few rough areas, and surrounding suburbs, Baton Rouge deviates from this norm. It resembles more of an overgrown country town, lacking the quintessential elements that define a typical urban setting, walkable streets, public transportation, and a dense population. Originally just another impoverished town along the Mississippi River, Baton Rouge maintains only a two-block downtown area with minimal activity. Beyond this small downtown enclave, the city transitions abruptly into either economically disadvantaged or suburban regions with little middle ground. A general rule establishes that anything south of Florida Boulevard falls into the suburban category, characterized by cul-de-sacs and uniform brick houses. While there are exceptions, such as the areas associated with rappers Fredo Bang and Kevin Gates in the top of South Baton Rouge and Lil Boozy in the southern part, these pockets constitute less than 10% of Baton Rouge's crime. The remaining 90% unfolds above Florida Boulevard. The entire north of Baton Rouge faces considerable challenges. Unlike cities where affluent developments may arise in underprivileged neighborhoods, North Baton Rouge lacks such initiatives. Abandoned houses line every block, and the commercial landscape is dominated by establishments like Circle K gas stations and fast food chains. The root of these struggles lies in the unfortunate reality that North Baton Rouge never had economic prosperity. The land in this area, once deemed invaluable, has been marred by a massive chemical refinery spanning 4.3 square miles. It is termed Cancer Alley due to the pollution from burning chemicals and plastics. North Baton Rouge contends with elevated disease levels, contributing significantly to its economic hardships. Living in this area is not only economically challenging, but also hazardous, 
as the entire North Baton Rouge is marked by division. And regrettably, the situation is worsening over time. Adding to the complexity, Louisiana consistently boasts the highest incarceration rates in the nation, disproportionately affecting the black population and exacerbating their marginalization within the state. It's not surprising then that disenfranchised black youth in Baton Rouge have turned to gangs for meaning and structure over decades. However, something has shifted in recent years. Unprecedented murder rates, predominantly influenced by gang activity, have created a deadly cycle of reprisals that continues to intensify. True Blita, whose roots traced back to the Glen Oaks neighborhood in North Baton Rouge, found himself in one of the many impoverished and crime-ridden areas on the city's north side. The same neighborhood was also home to the late rapper G Money, a close friend and departed comrade of NBA Youngboy, as well as Fredo Bang, the surviving adversary of Youngboy. On March 24, 2014, a clash unfolded between two factions. Representing one side was the Acres fam, hailing from Holiday Acres on the far north end of Baton Rouge. On the opposing side stood Jungle Music, a rap group based in the Glen Oak Zion City area. In a nutshell, rumors suggest that tensions escalated between the two groups after school hours. Amidst the conflict, one of the Acres fam teenagers, reportedly discontent with the situation, sought to convey a message. This individual was identified as Naki Dran Williams, also known as Scrappy. Following the altercation, Scrappy aimed to make a statement, marking a consequential turn of events in the ongoing discord between the Acres fam and Jungle Music. Just a few days later, a tragic event unfolded, leaving an indelible mark on his life. On the 28th of March, during a birthday party at the Baker Civic Center just north of Baton Rouge, Scrappy would open fire on the crowd, killing three and injuring one. Among the victims were True Blida's older brother, Moan, real name Kendall Camone Dorsey, and a close friend of Fredo Bang, Crazy Trey, real name Deontre Germain Claiborne. Williams's trial revealed that the three killed were unintended targets. The intended target was the surviving victim, who had a prior confrontation with Williams shortly before the shooting. Despite this revelation, the incident became associated with both True Blida's Glen Oaks neighborhood and Fredo Bang. News reports highlighted Williams, also known as Scrappy, as a member of a gang called Acres Fam, located about five miles north of Glen Oaks, separated by the Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Rapper Lit B from Acres Fam seemingly referenced Scrappy in a song, and witnesses recounted Williams' involvement in earlier altercations, with at least one occurring in the vicinity of the Glen Oaks neighborhood. Furthermore, it was revealed that the concert and birthday party in question were organized in honor of Fredo Bang, what was supposed to be his concert ended up being labeled as his birthday party. In a subsequent interview, Fredo would candidly discuss the emotional toll of losing his friend Crazy Trey on that fateful night. Uh, I mean, it traumatized me. It made me, uh, I lost a part of myself. Okay. Did they ever find the guys that did it? Um, they supposedly did. For a young True Blita and his neighborhood, the passing of his elder brother Moan represented a significant and profound loss. In an archival video shared on Jungle Music Larry's YouTube channel shortly after Moan's demise, True Blita is visible among a sizable group of older individuals gathered to pay homage to his fallen brother. Moan's death served as a catalyst for True Blita to approach music with greater dedication. In response, he and his associates formed a crew named Monway as a tribute to his departed brother. As True Blita matured, he transitioned to releasing music under the moniker Monway D, maintaining strong ties to the jungle music movement originating from Glen Oaks. Despite his youth, his early musical releases showcased remarkable potential and a level of maturity that surpassed his years. Regrettably, the path wasn't as straightforward as merely leaving the streets behind and immersing himself in music. As True Blita's career unfolded, it coincided with the intensification of a perilous conflict between two of Baton Rouge's most lethal yet lesser-known gangs. The loss of his brother at a tender age not only fueled True Blita's determination to pursue music but also ignited a desire for vengeance, propelling him back into the streets. Perhaps it was the amalgamation of these factors that eventually led True Blita and his partners, including his older brother Oakboy Coco, 
also recognized as Koblita, and his cousin Monoway D, later known as Real Blita, to coin a new identity for their group, the Bleeders, initially known as the True Bleeders. The name seemingly encapsulated the challenges they had faced since youth and their unwavering commitment to their movement, symbolizing the sacrifices they made by putting their blood into this endeavor. The Bleedas cultivated connections with various gangs, groups, and neighborhoods across Baton Rouge, including the Jungle Music Movement from Glen Oaks, a collaborative effort they initiated, now prominently represented by Jungle Music Larry. Additionally, they formed strong alliances with individuals from the nearby Zion City neighborhood, notably collaborating with the rapper T.G. Kamas, a rising star in Baton Rouge. Together, they joined forces under the banner of the Trench Business Collective. The Bleedas' affiliations extend to Fredo Bang's TBG, or Top Boy Guerrilla Crew, a group that gained notoriety for its conflict with Young Boy and his NBA 4K Trey Crews, following the tragic transformation of friend-turned-foe G Money, TBG's most promising rapper. The Bleedas are notably engaged in conflicts with various gangs in Baton Rouge, with a particularly prominent feud involving a gang known as the Vultures. This long-standing war between the two factions has played out both in the streets and in the realm of music. The Vultures are rooted in the Scotlandville community, situated in the northeast of Baton Rouge. Notably, their neighborhood on the southern end of Scotlandville is more commonly referred to as Bankstown, separated from Glen Oaks and Zion City by the Interstate 110 that traverses the city. The Vultures boast well-known rappers who represent the group under the acronym Wyke Whiff, signifying you know what it's hitting for. Notable figures include Wyke Whiff 5 and his cousin Yek Whiff Ka. Interestingly, V and Ka were once friends with Moan before their rift with the Bleedas. Both were seemingly part of the Jungle Music Collective, an association that linked them with Moan and True Bleeda. The origins and reasons for the beef between the Bleedas and the Vultures remain unclear, with no precise information on when or why this conflict initially began. During the early hours of April 23, 2021, Zip, also known as Aaron Batiste and a member of the Vultures gang, had just marked his 29th birthday on the north side of Baton Rouge. Tragically, he was shot by unidentified assailants that night, ultimately succumbing to his injuries in the hospital. That's coming up tonight on 9 News at 6. Well, a man has died after an early morning shooting on Plank Road. Sheriff's deputies say Aaron Batiste was rushed to the hospital around 3 this morning and later died from his injuries. No word on any suspects in this case. Zip was a father of two, and his tragic murder left his family in devastation, questioning when the senseless violence in the city would come to an end. In the aftermath, members of the Vultures mourned in their own way, expressing vows of revenge on social media. Later that year, the streets witnessed a surge in violence with a series of consecutive shootings throughout the month of October. On October 8, 2021, Jermorius Ferguson, a.k.a. Jemo, was shot outside a home in East Baton Rouge when someone opened fire from a passing vehicle, causing severe injuries. Despite being reportedly not associated with any gang, Gemo was a member of the U.S. Army and the founder of several nonprofits, including one named after him, aimed at assisting and supporting youths and young adults in Louisiana. Nine. Other of the man accused of killing two people outside the mall of Louisiana was laid to rest this morning after succumbing to shooting injuries from a drive-by in October. Though Demetrion Grimm requested a judge let him out of jail to attend, he was denied. Gimo was also the older brother of V, a well-known Vulture member, and another prominent Vulture named Dubug, often seen alongside V in music videos. Law enforcement later indicated that they did not believe Ferguson was the intended target, suggesting that V or Dubug might have been the intended victims. Unfortunately, on May 5, 2022, almost seven months after the shooting, Jimo succumbed to his injuries and lost his life. Despite Jimo's passing, the violence in the streets of Baton Rouge persisted. The conflict between the two gangs had garnered relatively little attention until late October 2021, when the situation escalated. The public eye turned towards the ongoing war after the vulture rapper Ka was brutally murdered in a hotel parking lot. It all happened around 9 a.m. in the Holiday Inn parking lot. Police say 23-year-old Malika DeMullen died on the scene. A woman was also shot but is expected to survive. The shooting pushes Baton Rouge past its homicide record set just last year. Ka, whose real name was Malika DeMullen, 
had been collaborating on music with his cousin V since at least 2015. However, his life and musical aspirations faced a setback in October 2020, when he was charged with second-degree murder in the case of Brandon Chapman. Chapman, also an aspiring rapper known as BME Beezy, had limited publicly known connections to the streets in Baton Rouge. Fortunately for Ka, in March 2021, a grand jury decided not to indict him. Following Ka's untimely death, the Bleedas publicly criticized him, labeling him a diamond pack due to his penchant for wearing a diamond grill. Speculation also circulated online suggesting the Bleedas might have been involved in Ka's death, especially after Koblita rapped on his song Blow for Blow, released in November 2022, with lyrics that many believe allude to Ka's killing. Following the tragic death of Ka, tensions flared in the streets, and within a few days, another young man lost his life. On October 28th, around 10.30 in the morning, a man was shot and killed on West Catalpa Street on the east side of Baton Rouge. The victim was identified as Jamonte Davis, an aspiring rapper known by the name Mugatti. Mugatti was purportedly a member of the gang SOG, or Sleep or Grind, another group allegedly associated with the Bleedas. His killing was widely viewed as a direct retaliation for the death of Ka. Up to this point, NBA and 4K Trey had not been directly entangled in the conflict. However, this changed on December 2nd, when young boy's right-hand man Ben Ten and his cousin Marvin Batiste were shot while driving on a highway in Prairieville, just southeast of Baton Rouge. The shooting, swiftly identified by the police as a targeted act of retaliation, resulted in Ben, the likely intended victim, being wounded while tragically his cousin Marvin lost his life. Marvin's death profoundly impacted Ben and, in a tribute to celebrate Marvin's life, Ben and other members of 4K Trey wore custom clothing to his funeral, prominently featuring the slime green color associated with their blood set, 4K Trey. Speculation arose in the aftermath, with many considering the Bleedas as potential suspects in the shooting. This suspicion seemed to gain traction a few months later when Bleeda member 40 Glock Xu hinted at the incident in the song Gator Pack, referencing the killing of someone, even though the primary target was Ben. Just before the onset of 2022, tensions escalated between Ben 10 and True Bleeda during a heated argument on Clubhouse. In the exchange, Bleeda accused Ben of being a counterfeit gangster, asserting that he had never engaged in shooting or killing anyone. On January 13, 2022, the Bleedas released what might be considered their most disrespectful song and music video to date, titled Pick Your Partner Up. The target of this release was unmistakably the Vultures. In the song, Kablita seemingly alluded once again to the murder of Ka, rapping about the stark reality of the street game and expressing his intent to bring the vultures down to test if they could truly fly. A few months later, tragedy struck the Bleedas, leaving the people of Baton Rouge in shock. This Perry Robinson here in the WAFB Plus studios for you tonight. Well, we're still following that deadly shooting outside the mall of Louisiana from earlier today that left two people dead and two others hurt. Now we have the chance to speak with Chief Murphy Paul about this shooting and he says that again this was a brazen and targeted attack and he also believes that the people responsible are also connected to other acts of violence around the parish and he now needs your help to offer any type of information to make sure that they can apprehend these people that are responsible so that they can get them off the street. Dante Dorsey, known by his stage name True Bleeda, was an 18-year-old rapper recognized for his versatile style often drawing comparisons to Baton Rouge's biggest star, NBA Youngboy. Much like Youngboy, True Bleeda exhibited a considerable amount of potential in his craft, crafting songs that seamlessly blended highly aggressive bars with moments of both rapping and singing. His lyrics delved into heartfelt stories about the challenging life in the streets of Baton Rouge. Tragically, True Bleeda's promising journey in both life and his budding rap career was abruptly cut short before it could fully unfold. On the 25th of February, 2022, he and a friend were gunned down in their hometown, marking an untimely end to his young life and the potential he carried as an emerging artist. Just after 1 p.m., authorities responded to reports of gunshots in the 6,300 block of Blue Bonnet Avenue, near the Mall of Louisiana. Upon arrival, they discovered four men in the intersection, two injured and two deceased, alongside a car peppered with bullet holes. True Bleeda was later confirmed as one of the deceased, according to his uncle. The suspects had apparently abandoned their vehicle after the shooting, fleeing the scene in another car. 
Immediately after the incident, Baton Rouge police seemed to be aware that the shooting was related to rival groups. This brazen daytime shooting occurred in an area typically considered safe, especially since the Mall of Louisiana was the largest mall in the state and a popular tourist destination in the city. The incident served as another stark reminder that rappers originating from the streets are seldom safe, even if they manage to distance themselves from the initial conflicts in their hometowns. Several months after Trublita's death, in April 2022, Dubug found himself arrested and charged with murder and attempted murder. The apparent motive behind the charges was his connection as the brother of the slain U.S. soldier, Gemmo. Dubug was also purportedly a close friend and cousin of the deceased vulture rapper Ka. At the time of his arrest, Dubug was already facing unrelated charges for possessing illegal weapons, and he was wanted by the Texas police for money laundering. The decisive link to the shooting was the discovery of his DNA in the abandoned car used by the shooters at the crime scene. In a surprising twist, law enforcement struggled to gather sufficient evidence to formally charge Dubug with the shooting. Nevertheless, they continued to detain him, pursuing further investigation. In April of the following year, Houston police arrested two other individuals linked to True Bleda's murder. Donald Ray Graves and Najua Jabari Harris. The arrest allegedly occurred while they were involved in aiding the smuggling of illegal immigrants. Graves, reportedly a known gang member in Baton Rouge, was said to have purchased one of the cars used in the drive-by that claimed True Bleda's life. Harris, identified as a member of the vultures known as YK Whiff Do, was pictured on Instagram with his fallen friend Ka. Since these arrests, Dubug has seemingly been released from jail and is publicizing his life proudly adopting the moniker, the Grim Reaper. The question of whether law enforcement can definitively identify the perpetrators behind this tragic drive-by remains unanswered. At present, Trublita's death appears as another case in the long list of unsolved killings, underscoring the escalating tragedy on the streets of Baton Rouge. It also serves as another poignant example of an exceptionally talented rap artist losing their life prematurely due to gang-related violence. As we reflect on the stories that unfolded in the streets of Baton Rouge, it becomes painfully clear that the cycle of gang violence leaves no one untouched. The lives lost, the families shattered, and the communities scarred are a stark reminder of the profound impact that such conflicts can have. In the aftermath of True Bleda's tragic death, we are left with more questions than answers, and the pain lingers on. The city, with its rich cultural tapestry and vibrant talents, stands at a crossroads, it is a plea to break free from the destructive grip of rivalry and violence that has plagued its neighborhoods for far too long. The individuals we encountered in this narrative were not just statistics. They were sons, brothers, fathers, and aspiring artists with dreams cut short. Their stories compel us to recognize the urgent need for change, to seek alternatives to the seemingly endless cycle of revenge. Baton Rouge, like any community, has the potential for growth, healing, and positive transformation. It is a call for unity, for finding common ground beyond the boundaries of rivalries. By fostering understanding, supporting one another, and investing in the well-being of our youth, we can pave the way for a brighter future. Let this be a collective plea to break the chains of violence, to build bridges instead of walls, and to honor the memory of those who have fallen by creating a safer and more prosperous community for the generations to come. It is our hope that this documentary serves as a catalyst for change, inspiring individuals to choose a path of peace, unity, and shared prosperity.